Welcome to the Megalia Rose Studio. Today's demonstration painting will be a landscape emphasizing leafy deciduous trees. If you've viewed my video painting leafy trees a simple method, you'll have a head start in painting tree foliage and enjoy applying the methods covered in that demonstration in today's painting. If you haven't seen that video and enjoy painting landscapes with trees, I hope you can take a look sometime. Today the demonstration is a simple landscape that provides many options for you to elaborate on as you feel comfortable with the techniques that are used. Here is a completed painting showing what we'll cover in the demonstration. I will be lightly sketching my composition onto a 1 8 sized piece of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper which measures about 11 by 7 and a half inches and I'll be making that sketch with a number two pencil. Use any size of watercolor paper that you're comfortable using. For demonstration purposes, here is a sketch done with a fine line Sharpie pen of my composition. As you can see, it's quite simple. I have an odd number of trees, which is always an effective design component. I have my horizon line not at the center but a little bit lower which will allow me enough room for the foliage of the trees. If you would like to try a more challenging landscape add in other elements such as cattle, sheep, a fence, a shed, rocks or a path. Here is a sample of another possible composition. After you have your sketch on the watercolor paper Tape it in all four edges onto a support board as I've done here. If you find your pencil marks are a little too dark in certain areas, here's a little hint. Use a kneaded eraser and if you simply press onto your pencil marks, it will lift them and make them lighter. Sometimes we artists like our pencil lines to show and other times we don't, but that's a little hint to lighten areas such as the foliage if they've become too dark. So at this point, once you have your sketch on the watercolor paper and you've taped it, let's assemble the supplies and colors we're going to need for our painting. Now let's talk about the supplies you're going to need for this little landscape. First I have my 140 pound cold press watercolor paper taped to my support board. I use artist's tape. Please try not to use colored tape of any type. Uh, sometimes people use blue painter's tape and even orange and it will distract your eye from the actual colors that you are putting onto your painting. So keep it into the neutrals beige and white. The brushes that I'm going to use will include a one inch flat, an eight, six, and two inch round, and a stiff bristle brush or even an old toothbrush to use to spatter the paint. Um, you'll find that you'll develop a favorite brush for doing this down the line. Two containers of clear water, a cloth or paper towel, a test strip of watercolor paper, and although it's not shown here, have a hair dryer handy. Uh, it will accelerate the process and we can get our paintings done in record time if we can do that in between some of our shoots. So those are the basic supplies. For colors, we're going to be using sap green, Hansi lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, and indigo. Optional colors are quinacridin gold, which I have here by my raw sienna, and quinacridin burnt orange, which I have near my burnt sienna. These are optional colors. We can use the burnt sienna instead of the quinacridin burnt orange. We can use the raw sienna instead of the quinacridin gold. It makes very little difference actually. It's just a matter of personal preference. So those are our colors. Once you have everything assembled, let's start to paint our landscape. Activate the ultramarine blue and either raw sienna or quinacridin gold 
And you also will want to activate either burnt sienna or quinacritin burnt orange. You activate by simply brushing a little water onto each of those colors. You're going to make two very dilute washes of the ultramarine blue as one and the raw sienna or quin gold for the other and you're going to be using a one inch flat brush first to apply the ultramarine blue to the entire area above the horizon line. There won't be a conflict of colors because I know that my tree with the greens and the brush will do just fine with the blue. You can avoid tree trunks if you like or a little bit of blue on them it will hurt absolutely nothing at all. This is what we would consider where there's the brush in that line as our horizon line. It's where sky in our painting meets the earth. Okay. If you desire and have a Kleenex or a soft paper towel around, you can add a few clouds at this point by simply lifting some of the color with that paper towel. And we'll be doing some more work with that, so don't worry about getting that all done at that point. Rinse your brush out very well. And now we're going to apply the raw sienna or quinacridin gold wash to the base. I'm going to add a little extra water here. Get that paint to move. And if it happens to touch into some other areas, don't let that panic you at this point. That makes things much, 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 much more interesting. Now I've activated the quinacritin burnt orange and I'm going to use it instead of burnt sienna which is fine into this corner area and I'm going to run it along the bottom. Warm darker colors will come forward so that I'm establishing some atmospheric perspective here. If you want to tip the board to get some of that to run that is just fine because it makes some very interesting things. This is what watercolor does. It moves. It doesn't stay still. If you have a credit card that you have cut so that it has a sharp edge, you can add some weeds, grasses at the bottom corners. This can add a lot of fun into the painting at times, give you some atmospheric perspective. Sometimes even a little one there. Okay. I have a little patch here of some of the Quin Gold and I'm just going to move it around and some of it is actually run up into this blue area. Is that a problem? Not as far as I see it, but if you'd like just leave it or I wouldn't even suggest lifting it up. It could be part of a sunrise or sunset. No problems. No problems at all. As long as you keep the paint moving it just makes things more interesting. So now you can dry it with a hair dryer. Let it sit for a few moments and then after that we will check and see if it's dry. If you use your hair dryer and after you've turned it off and given your painting a moment or two to cool, if you use the back of your hand, not your fingertips which might have oils, if it feels cool it's probably still wet. If it feels room temperature so it's probably dry. So I'll be back after drying my painting. Don't go away. I'm going to go ahead and check my painting and yes it is completely dry. Now I'm going to follow the technique used in my video, Painting Leafy Trees, A Simple Method, but I'm going to have one difference. Instead of wetting areas I plan to be tree foliage with clear water, I will be using a dilute Hansa Lemon Yellow Wash. This will enable me to see and plan the wet areas more easily. 
and the yellow against the blue sky will tone down the yellow a bit. And the only thing that might happen is a light green will develop, which is in my plan. I've activated my Hansa Lemon Yellow, Sap Green, Burnt Sienna, and Indigo. And using my number 8 round brush, I'm going to gently drop in areas of yellow, concentrating more at the top of the foliage areas, where the sun most likely will have lightened the leaves. Be sure to leave areas where the sky shows through. These we call sky holes and they add to a somewhat realistic effect in painting your trees. Be sure to avoid the trunks. If we want leaves to come over those, we can do that at a later date. I am concentrating the yellow at the top. But I am putting it everywhere in the fact that it is going to mix with the other colors and add some interest. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse my brush well. And now I'm going to drop sap green into the wet yellow and some of the under unpainted areas. But I'm not going to really concentrate on that top area because again, that's where my sun is hitting those foliage areas. Again, the darker colors will be more pronounced at the bottom of the foliage areas since the upper areas will be shading them. That nice lemon yellow base allows the colors to mix and run a bit, adding a very nice diffused look to certain areas. If your sap green happens to be very bright, you can tone it down with just adding a bit of burnt sienna and mixing them together. This will allow it to tone down a little bit and not be quite so brilliant. Brilliant green can be distracting so we have to be careful and save it for those important places. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix in a little bit of my ultramarine blue and I'm dropping it right into some of the green areas. Again, I'm building shadows. As in my painting leafy tree demonstration, if you find the blue too dominant, drop in a little bit more of your green, your sap green, into those areas and it will create a nice dark green. A little blue is fine. It adds interest to your painting. Watercolor really looks great when we do the unexpected. Finally in the lowest areas I'm going to use a bit of indigo. Not overdoing it. Again indigo is a blue and anything that needs to be toned away from blue can be accomplished with either yellow or green. Okay. Now everything is still pretty wet and I'm going to rinse my brush well and dry it off and in this case you may want to go ahead and use the number six which is a little smaller, a little more control. Be sure to always wet your brush before you use it, even if you're using dry brush techniques, you just wipe off the extra water. Now I'm going to gently pull some of these areas up. And again, this is a dry brush and it adds a sort of leafy texture to some of these areas. If you find a sky hole that's too big, distracting, just pull in a little of that color. 
this is a fun time of a painting when the colors are still very wet. If your brush gets too wet, simply dry it off on your towel and continue pulling those leaves out so you're not getting straight edges which look rather unnatural. You can go right up into those trunk areas but try not to cover the trunks completely. I think we have pretty much our nice little leafy tree area. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for a moment and then use my hairdryer and return. My tree foliage is completely dry and now I'm going to move down a bit to the brushy area that's beneath the trees and a little bit over into the sky area here. Now, uh, the whole time we're painting the brush, please avoid the tree trunks. This is very important because we are going to be painting those so that they appear definitely in front of that brush, and this is sometimes easy to forget. The first thing I'm going to do is take that dilute yellow wash that I already had prepared, and I'm going to gently put some of that along the top of my pencil brush area. While it's still wet now, I'm going to come in with my sap green and put that into the area, letting it blend into that yellow that's the sun just hitting the top of the brush. Notice I'm not going to go extremely dark at this point underneath here because I am going to be adding some shadows and it's always better to go light before you go dark because with watercolor once you lose that light it's gone right now what I'm basically doing is blocking in the brush area this brushy area I'm making sure that I know where it's going to be before I start immediately coming in with darks I'm wiggling that top line a bit not quite as extensively as on the leaves of the trees, but just a little bit different. Now I'm going to intensify that sap green, and everything's wet, everything's moving. If you do go over a tree, that's fine. What we'll make is an arrangement where it looks like that tree has some brush in front of it. When people tell you that you cannot change or fix watercolor, it's not entirely true, but planning is extremely important. I'm really getting that sap in here in the dark mode. Okay. Now I'm not going to have that line just perfectly straight. I'm going to go ahead here and come in and kind of pull it down just a little tiny bit. in certain places, maybe even in front of a tree trunk here. This is more grass than brush, but this is a fun time to put it in because it will blend into all that nice wetness. I'm going to go ahead and put in a bit of indigo at the very bottom for my shadows I'm 
If you want, you can gently tip your board to get some of that color to blend. And now if you have that credit card or a sharp palette knife, this is a great time to go ahead and see if you can scrape in some little differentiations. This time for fun I'm going to use a little palette knife. And all you're going to do is incise some little shrubs, even some grasses. Sometimes these don't show up until it dries. Now as I'm looking, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe a little more. Well, it's still wet. Blossoms at this stage could be an issue if you don't like them. I like blossoms, so if they appear, I consider it just an extra bonus. Adding a little bit more yellow and kissing a few spots at the top, letting it run. I think that's going to be it for the brush right now. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And then I'll get back to you. Now that my brush area is completely dry, it's time to bring this whole area together by painting the tree trunks and then afterwards adding the limbs and branches. Uh, these techniques are illustrated in more detail on my video, Painting Leafy Trees, a Simple Method. Depending on your painting, it might be a good idea to determine the direction of the light. My foliage seems to indicate that the sunlight is coming from above and perhaps a little bit from the left. I'm going to intensify that by having my tree trunks lighter on the left side and their shadow area on the right side. This will help again establish the directionality. I'm using my number six round brush and I'm going to apply raw sienna, just a bit of raw sienna, not too dark, I can always go darker, to the tree trunk. A little bit of brushes there, that's fine, no problem. I'm going to make sure my brush is, brush is fairly dry and I'm going to bring in a dark and this particular dark is ultramarine blue mixed with burnt sienna and I'm going to gently, same brush, just drop it into what I was going to consider my shadow areas and just let it blend a little bit and bleed. I'm going to go ahead and do the next tree. And for a change of pace I'm going to use my dark it's a mixture of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, which is sort of a purple, but it can be awfully fun when you're looking for a different type of contrast. Again, just trying to get those shadow areas. I'm going to go ahead and complete the other trunks, but I'm going to speed that up and I will be back after I have finished those and have dried the trunks.
Now the trunks are dry and I'll be using that same mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna that I used to darken the sides of the trunk for the branches and limbs. I'll be using a number two round which is a pretty small brush but any small rigger or round will work just as well. Keep the limbs in proportion to the trunks. If the trunks are this certain diameter, don't make the limbs larger than that as a rule unless you are doing an actual tree and that is how it has grown. It may sound silly, but when placing the limbs, try to imagine yourself as the tree as you paint these structures. And remember that branches may be visible in the sky hole areas. Start with fewer tiny branches and look carefully before adding more. Try to keep the upper one-third of the foliage area without too many busy little branches and twigs. I'm now going to go ahead and start this process with the tree to the far left. Limbs and branches can weave in and out of the foliage areas. Don't make them continuously straight, which would look rather unnatural. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let this stay at this point and do the other branches, but I will speed that process up. Using a number eight or larger round brush, let's start working on the mid and foreground of our painting. I've activated quinacridin gold, quinacridin burnt orange, which you could use either raw sienna or burnt sienna in place of, also sap green, and I've mixed a purple, which is a combination of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. Since cool colors seem to recede, I'm going to use clear water to dampen the area that will become a distant mountain range. It's going to be medium wet and I'm going to just simply drop in a little bit of that purple. I don't want it too dark because as things recede they should get fainter. So I want to keep that soft edge at the top. If you find it's drying too quickly, you can always pull and soften that edge a little bit.
Now I have a small little area that I had left and I'm going to just put in a little bit of Quin Gold. If it blends into the purple it'll simply make a neutral and that is going to be just fine as far as I'm concerned. The gold color will probably look quite nice against the purple. I'm going to soften this edge again down here. Okay. If your paint goes off into the edge, you can always wipe it up rather than risk having it flow back into your painting. Now I'm going to use clear water again, and I'm going to simply dampen an area in this mid area here, and I'm going to drop in a little bit of very, very dilute sap green to give the hint that we're talking about a little summer landscape. Be sure that you soften all the edges. We don't want this to have a hard line at any time. Just a blush of green is all we're looking for. If you feel that things are getting a little too hard line, use a tissue and just blot up some of those harder edges. Now lastly I'm going to intensify the Quin Burnt Orange areas at the corners and the bottom. First again by putting in clear water. And you can see where we have incised earlier and they've left some nice marks of some weeds. And now just drop in some intensifying Quin Burnt Orange. Don't keep it too regular. Let it flow if it flows into any of the other areas green. That's just fine. You can again tip your board to encourage the paint to move. Always watch it when you're at this stage. You can always soften and grab anything that looks like it's creating too hard an edge. I'm going to use our little dry brush technique and pull up some of that color. And I think we're pretty much done with all the blocking in. I'm going to let that dry for a bit and then we'll take a final look and do the dance as we call it, looking at our values and seeing what details we need to add. Once your painting is completely dry, it's time to set down the painting brush and step away from your painting for a few hours up to a day. When you return to evaluate what else needs to be done, first use cropping L's to help you focus on the painting without surrounding distractions. Next, pick up the painting still on the support board and place it in different locations and in different lighting in your home. View the painting from a distance of up to 8 feet, but at least 3 feet. Following these simple methods while evaluating a painting will help you identify any parts of the painting that need to be adjusted. What areas need to be darkened? Is lifting needed to lighten an area? And just what more should I do to make it look completed? I have decided in this little painting that I want to bring in some green around the base of the tree trunks to ground that area. I want to soften part of the Quin Gold area to the far right near the horizon line and add some additional tall grasses in the corners with Quin Burnt Orange. And lastly, use my stiff bristle brush to splatter some of the dark brown ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix into the foreground. 
If I'm feeling really risky, I may add a few birds in the background flying away. So I'm going to speed up that process and we'll return with hopefully a completed painting. Well, I think it's time to call this little lesson painting done. Remember to see practice paintings not only a way to improve your skills, but fun in itself. And often that little lesson painting is something special that you can use as a gift or put on your own wall. I hope that you're able to paint with me again here at the Megalia Rose Studio on YouTube. And please check in with me on my website, megaliarose.com. Until we paint again together, Bye.